Okay, so you guys might have to bear with me because I'm getting over a cold right now. Um, so I'm sorry if you can't hear me, but my name is Zachary Lieberman. Um, I'm a senior here in Dr. Chan's honors research class, and I'm here to tell you what I've done over the past year with this project on ADHD students and learning outside. So I chose to focus on attention deficit disorder because it's the most prevalent neurodevelopmental disorder in children, especially in the United States. So there are over 5 million kids currently diagnosed with attention deficit disorder, and not everyone has a formal diagnosis, so the number only gets bigger than that. And these are kids who struggle with inattention and hyperactivity and really need a lot of support in order to be successful, both school and so like socially and academically in school. So anything that we can do that's easily implementable in the classroom is super important to investigate because having to just put people on medication isn't always the best option. So while I was doing my research on Dr. Chen, help. It's like just zoomed in on the image. Oh. Sorry. So while I was doing background research, I really focused on a few studies that I'd like to talk about the influence of being taking a walk outside or listening to nature sounds and also working under natural lighting. And they all seem to find that it can help you pay attention and help you think better. And the science behind that comes from uh, your neurotransmitters, especially. So being outside in the presence of nature, it often stimulates uh, the production of dopamine and serotonin, which are kind of your feel-good motivation neurotransmitters. And it also suppresses the production of cortisol and melatonin, which are, I mean, your stress hormone is cortisol, and then melatonin is what regulates your sleep cycle. And in general, being outside can really help your parasympathetic nervous system takeover, which is really just relaxing you because your sympathetic nervous system is what's going to make you jump into that fight or flight response. So attention can be quantitatively measured with an EEG. And so an EEG is this headset right here. It's also called an electroencephalogram. And essentially what it does is it reads the electric signal of your neurons. So this is a neuron and action potentials um, or synapses travel along the neuron as your cells communicate. And so that action potential graph right there, what's actually being measured is the voltage output. That's what the EEG is measuring. So it amplifies the signal and it is able to give you brain waves from the signal that's being put out by the neurons. So we were really only concerned with the theta and beta waves, which your theta waves are associated with kind of wandering thinking, you're not really focused, very much like distracted, and your beta waves are going to be more frequent when you're focused and paying active attention. And because of that, you can make a ratio called the theta-beta ratio that a lot of studies use as a marker for attention. And so this ratio, when it's lower, means heightened attention, and when it's higher, means less focused. So I use the theta-beta ratio as a marker to see whether or not the attention in my experiment would improve. So my research question ended up becoming, can exposure to natural stimuli effectively supplement attentive or cognitive issues in ADHD adolescent students? And I hypothesized that when participants test under the exposure of natural stimuli, theta beta wave ratio computed from the EEG readings will be significantly lower than the baseline ratio, which would indicate improvements in attention. So my experiment was set up with four participants that I knew through personal affiliation and we're keeping their information anonymous outside of the brain waves that we use. So two of them had ADHD, two of them did not. And we tested each participant in four different conditions. Essentially what would happen is we would have them take an SAT style academic test. And during that test, we would record their brain waves for 25 minutes because that's kind of the optimal period for you to be focused on a task or so during the baseline session, they just took the test in their own home. I went to their house with the EEG. They took the test, put the headset on during the test, and we recorded their theta beta waves during the test. The nature walk session was similar, but we had them take a 15-minute nature walk immediately prior to testing, 
And then we had them test at a room at the energy lab at Hawaii Preparatory Academy, which is a different high school. And that energy lab is also where we did the soundscape and natural lighting tests, both in different rooms. And that's just testing either in the presence of nature sounds or with only natural lighting. You can see the floor to ceiling glass. Um, and what we did is we took the theta and beta wave values at one minute intervals for each of these participants. So for example, this is the baseline session of ADHD one. These were the theta and beta wave values during the test. And we took all 25 theta beta wave values, got ratios for the session because the theta beta wave ratio is how we're gonna measure their attention. And then we compared them. So this is the ADHD group. These are the averages of their theta beta wave ratios across sessions. So this would be their baseline session, their nature walk session, their soundscape session, and their natural lighting session. And what's happening here is we've set the baseline to zero and these successive sessions are the decrease in the ratio from the baseline. So for example, if you look at ADHD one, their theta beta wave ratio was 6.02 during the baseline session, but during the nature walk session, it was 4.42 which is a huge decrease. And so what this is doing is it's the decrease 1.6 from what the theta beta wave ratio was during the baseline. So these are all just the differences from baseline showing that there was a decrease with each intervention. Uh, and you'll notice also that the nature walk session tended to be the most effective. And if we look at the non-ADHD group, it's almost exactly the same. And we did T tests to make sure that everything was statistically significant. So in conclusion, I think that the numbers are really promising for the prospect of implementing, like really, you could even just take a class and have a discussion outside. Obviously there are limitations. You can't take a math test outside, but everything that I did sort of shows that being able to take a walk outside and be kind of immersed in a green space has positive effects on your attention and cognition. And this might not even just have educational applications. This could also be used in a clinical setting. I think that anything that helps with relieving the symptoms of ADHD without having to resort to medication or another extreme means is extremely important as we explore more of that field. Um, and then over the course of the last year, I mean, I learned a lot about just the whole process of conducting an experiment and doing research. But I think the highlight was making sure that I was managing my time wisely. And so my advice for the next class going into this is really treat this like an actual class. I think in the first semester, I got really carried away with treating this like a study hall and I'm just gonna do the research on the side and it doesn't mean much, but there are deadlines for this class. There are assignments, you're expected to keep up with it just like every other class that you take here. So please do not blow it off and make sure you're doing your homework. Um, and then I really want to thank you, Dr. Chan, for everything you've done for me over the course of this past year. I really enjoyed this and I've learned a lot from you and from the class and just the experience has been fantastic. I want to thank my dad for overseeing the entire thing, making sure that I didn't get off track, my family for supporting me throughout the year, my friends and the participants for willingly participating in my experiment. And I mean, that about sums up what I did this year.